Hi, I'm Philippe Pavel. <laughs> Did you raise the energy in here? <laughs> Hi, I'm Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes, and we're having a conversation with Dr. William Tiller here at the U.S. Mastery Conference. And we were just talking about how once we raise our, is it vibrations? What do you call that? It is, it is something different than energy, and it's something different than vibrations, but it is something very complex, which we call the electromagnetic gauge symmetry state. Most orthodox scientists don't know what that means, so don't feel badly. Electromagnetic gauge, gauge symmetry, symmetry state. state. So yeah. how about? So it's an aspect. It's an aspect of symmetry in nature, but quite different than like snowflakes. You see that kind of symmetry. Um, there's a different symmetry in fundamental particles. A neutron versus a proton. They're different symmetries. Quarks that make them up. They're different symmetries. Okay. So but, so this one is is another symmetry state, but it, it is on a macroscopic level. And the, the piece of information that relates here is that what we do, the experimental evidence of a space at, at this higher symmetry state, it manifests magnetic property influences which look like we're accessing magnetic monopoles. Now, it turns out in the late in the 1960s and early 1970s, really great physicists with huge devices and lots of government money around the world were looking for magnetic monopoles because physicists thought symmetry, you got an electric monopole, that's the electron, there should be magnetic monopoles. And none of them found magnetic monopoles. And they came to the conclusion, well, as much as it would be nice, they're not there. Mm. And yet when we, but all of them were making their measurements from the U1 gauge state. Ah, interesting. When we lift the gauge symmetry state to the next level, the SU2 level, we see evidence that says, hey, that looks just like the behavior you'd expect from a magnetic monopole. Oh, wow. So what does that mean to us, at least on an everyday life, raising our state into that S state? A S yeah, okay. What, what, what can happen there? What can we do there? Anything. Anything. I mean, it, you, you, can, you can use your intention to change the properties of materials. You can use your change intention. Change the property of materials. Mm, yeah, you can change, you can, you can heal people anywhere around the world, non-local. You can do, well, what we are doing, um, we are starting to use our technology in the area that could be called business. We are taking, one of the things we're working on right now is to take a, uh, a special protein for athletes or others with containing about five different components it's called Helix. It's being produced through a company called Novus Life Solutions. And we are lifting its symmetry state to this SU2 level wow. and imprinting it with uh, an intention for it to nourish people at these more subtle levels wow. of life. And uh, that's one application. That's right. On radio, we talked about how when a mother kisses a child with yep. the intent of making yep. the boo-boo go away, right. how it actually works. Sure, sure, yeah. Is the mother raising her energy to that? We all, it, it turns out that the human acupuncture meridian chakra system is already at the SU2 level. So this is probably the, the source of the life source in humans. That this is where, it turns out if you have, thermodynamics says if I have a state here and I have another state somewhere else and one is higher than the other, mm -hmm. then the higher can do work on the lower. Mm -hmm. All right? So if we're in a U1 gauge environment or a U1 gauge body, but there is a system in that body that's at the SU2 level, mm -hmm. then it can do work on the U1 gauge body. Why does it seem we're shutting off this S SU2 U2 level, or we're not tapping into it Well, people haven't been aware of it. Our experiments have shown that the human acupuncture meridian chakra systems are most likely at that level, and all of us have it, and, that, and all vertebrates have it, so all the animals have it as well, and that that's what makes us function. That's where, our, um, that's where our vital energy comes from. It's like the kinds of things people talked about a long time ago, and science, orthodox science, poo-hooed it and thought that they had proven it 
didn't exist? Well, it does exist. So this might be what you were getting at when you said just wishing doesn't do it because right. just wishing then yeah. is just on this level giving lip service. Right, or, or, or uh, sometimes even uh, meaning well for the wishing. You've got to pass a certain threshold mm. in order to be able to have a significant effect. Okay, so how do we pass that threshold? By building ourselves inside. Building By ourselves inside. Yeah, be developing the infrastructure within ourselves. That is, we have to, that's why I suggested meditation. So mm -hmm. there's meditation, then there's Qigong. Think of, our, think of ourselves as a radio station. Okay. Okay. Um, I get that because we're electrical bodies. Yeah, well, but right. uh, we don't need to worry about the electrical, but that's, but that's part of it. We can think of that. But the, but the concept is what do you want to do is generally you want to broaden the ba broadcast band width, mm -hmm. and you want to build the power for transmission. It's what humans are about. I mean, the issue is to build one's capability to broaden their band of communication with others and broadcast at great power levels. Now, Dr. Tiller, I know that if I go to the gym and use the weights, yeah. that my muscle will get bigger. Yeah, exactly. And I could see that. Yeah, yeah, but this is inside now. And this is inside. Infrastructure, and it's the same sort of thing. Now, will I see it somehow? You'll manifest it. You will see it. You will feel it. You mm -hmm. will know it. That's the whole point. It's become inner knowing. Great stuff. You quiet the noise within the universe. Our world as it is now is all caught up with making noise to keep them distracted so they will not find out about themselves. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's the way of our present world. It's sad, but it's true. But it's our choice. We don't recognize that we've been making that choice, but we have. So, all that is happening is us. We have unconsciously or consciously created these situations in our relative universe, in our simulator, by our thoughts, attitudes, and actions. As a group consciousness? Uh, it's As individuals, generally, we do that. We don't do it as a group consciousness. And the, at this point, it's important to bring in one other thing. The information handling capacity of the human unconscious is more than a million times that of the conscious. So almost all the data of the five physical senses passing into us is gathered by the, our unconscious. Our unconscious takes that data, it manipulates it, it senses it, it writes, probably draws graphs, it writes equations and analyzes things, and then it puts together little kernels of information which it sends to the conscious brain. So the conscious brain can experience that it's living. Mm. The conscious brain handles less than 50 bits per second, maybe less than 12. Uh, but the thing that's important about these kernels of information is that they are only of a character that the consciousness has given meaning to. If the conscious does not give meaning to a thing, it seems to dump that information. The point is the meaning is like a, a filter. For example, orthodox scientific community do not give meaning to this other stuff. Mm. And so they don't even see it. They can't, they're almost incapable of seeing it. It's blocked by their conscious. So their unconscious can't feed them information and that information makes them more and more aware. So the so meaning comes from us. We, if we give more things meaning, our unconscious will give us much more information to buttress that meaning, and so we can grow along those pathways of knowing. This leads me to just a couple more questions, and with your permission, I'd like to go into another segment, if sure. you will. that's okay. We're gonna run overtime here just a little bit, but this is so important. We're talking to Dr. William Tiller. I am Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes. Thank you for joining us.